Get it to play again. Get it to play again. Clap, clap, clap. Good job. Controlling the playback of a video isn't typically cause for celebration, but it is when you do it with your mind. Six-year-old Giselle El Nasser has been practicing just that. Get it to play again. Giselle is one of 34 children testing a cutting-edge brain-computer interface, or BCI, at Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital in Toronto. If you think about interacting with your world and controlling things around your environment simply by your brain, you know, what is the potential for your brain to learn, you know, and to adapt, right? And that, that, for that neuroplasticity to, you know, kind of evolve your brain structure and organization, like, what could be possible? We don't even know, right? And so I think that's why this is so exciting. A BCI is a piece of technology that uses computer software to translate brain activity into commands, allowing the user to control functions on a computer like playing a game, sending an email, or stopping and starting a video. Yes. Yes. Okay. The BCI Giselle is using is the Epoch X headset, developed by biotech company Emotive. The device uses a collection of sensors to read the user's brain activity. Once secured to her head, data picked up to the device gets fed into Hall & Bloorview's mindset software, which converts Giselle's brain activity into actionable commands. Before all that happens though, the emotive software needs to learn Giselle's brain patterns. Here, you can see the software being trained to differentiate between her quiet brain and her active brain. We're going to think about clapping to get it to start. Yeah? Three, two, one. Yay! I'm thinking about clapping. Oh, that was a great one. The computer likes that one. These signals become the stop and go commands for whatever activity the user is trying to tackle. At Hall & Bloorview, children practice performing tasks such as painting a picture with a motorized ball for a brush, operating a remote control car on a racetrack, or something as simple as controlling the playback on a video. The kids who will get the most out of a brain-computer interface are the ones who can't access Siri or Alexa via voice and who have difficulty typing out on a computer. Um, this way they just need to be able to um, use the patterns of their thoughts to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Giselle has been diagnosed with an extremely rare gene mutation that causes a series of developmental delays affecting everything from her physical mobility to her verbal communication. Because of this, Giselle needs constant assistance in her day-to-day -day life. But her parents say the BCI gives them hope that one day, she may be more independent. It's always very thrilling, you know, to be honest. Sometimes, yeah, you get overwhelmed with emotions to see your daughter who cannot actually uh, start a song even, or even communicate if she's hungry or she's thirsty. She see her actually can interact. She can play the things that, that she likes. Um, she can talk to you her stuff as she wants. So it's, it's really very thrilling and uh, very emotional at the same time, to say the least. Yes. We'll do some baby games, Adam, we're going to be in here. Another participant in the program is 15-year-old Adam Haggerty. Unlike Giselle, Adam, who has cerebral palsy, can verbally communicate and has a good degree of autonomy in his day-to-day -day life with the help of a hand-controlled wheelchair. Still, there's a lot he can't do with ease, like being able to open doors without straining to reach for a wall-mounted button. His hope is that BCI technology can help bridge that gap. Without tickling my brain. Without tickling your brain. <laughs> tickling, I think. Oh, During his third time using the BCI, Adam shows us how he plays Alex Jumps, a video game where a character runs from left to right on a 2D landscape with Adam using his thoughts to control when Alex jumps to avoid pitfalls. That's some really nice control. When Adam is focused, his actions are seamless. There you go. But as distractions start to enter the picture, like excessive noise or even prolonged silence with too many people staring at him, he loses control of the activity. You can try closing your eyes if you want. Can we try and <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Adam says it's hard to put into words what using a BCI feels like because sensation is not grounded in any one of the five senses, but rather is a sum of their parts. It was interesting, it was cool that that, that worked like that, where I could just think of like something and then it would like jump. As the technology develops, there might be a way for, for it to actually figure to like decode those that electricity into 
the actual thought, which like integrating a brain with a computer kind of thing, right? Which is actually kind of a scary thought at the same, same time. In the near future, the BCI clinic expects to introduce software that will be able to decode signals into letters and words, allowing the children to communicate with their minds alone. Looking further, the possibilities for BCI devices are limitless, with the technology serving as a potential solution for a range of physical and neurological conditions through the help of brain-controlled robotics and exoskeletons. If we can get these kids using brain-computer interfaces very early on, then, you know, then their brains will be developed to uh, really be really proficient at interacting with the world and other people simply through the power of the mind. Good job. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of work to be the life of the party.